Okay guys, I do not know what is going to come up in your exam, but I'm very, very sure that there is going to be at least one question on balancing equations. You need to know this really, really, really well. So I'm going to work you through um, a few examples here. I'm going to show you some easy ones, which are kind of like bottom of the higher paper, foundation paper. I'm going to show you some medium ones, which will be the middle of the um, higher paper, and then some hard ones, which are going to be right at that top end of the higher paper, kind of like virtual on A-level questions. If you want some more to practice, um, there are loads more available in my books, over on my website, or over on my classroom channel. Whenever you have an equation, you have to make sure that you have the same on the left hand side as you do on the right hand side. So here we have an equation which is lovely and balanced. We have one square, one circle on this side, and we have one square and one circle on this side. But if something happens, and then we ended up with two squares and circles on the other side, I just move those over there two squares and circles on the other side. Now we don't have a balanced equation. We would have to add some more squares and circles on the left hand side to balance it. And what we can just do is just pop a two there and pop a two there. So now we have two squares on this side, two circles on this side, two squares on this side, two circles on this side. It doesn't matter that the squares and circles on the right hand side are now joined together and the left hand side they weren't joined together. We still need to make sure they're balanced. I'm going to talk you through how to balance some equations. These do get tricky but the very very best thing you can do is just practice loads and loads. So I'm going to talk you through the rules on how to do this um, and I want you to do all of your equations like this. So draw a circle, draw a circle, draw a circle. You will not have to change anything inside that circle. Draw a line down the middle and list the elements that we have. Now we've listed them, count it up how many you have. So the left hand side we have two nitrogens, two oxygens, right hand side one nitrogen, one oxygen. So we can see clearly we need to add some more nitrogens and oxygens onto our right hand side. Now we cannot change anything inside the circle. So the only thing we can do is add more similar circles like this. So now we have two circles over the um, right hand side that are the same. So we can scribble it out, change the numbers, look at them again. We have two nitrogens and we have two oxygens. Good. Now we have two nitrogens and two oxygens on both sides. Write out the equation uh, neatly so the examiners are happy that we know what we're talking about. N2 plus O2 goes to 2NO. Here is our next one. Circles around compounds. Line down the middle. List our elements. Okay, now it does help if you list them in the same order. It'll just make your life a little bit easier. Count them, so one, two, one, one, three, one. Now we need some more um, hydrogens over this side, but I can't just add hydrogens because it's in water. So I have to add another H2O over to this side. Let me do those numbers again. That now gives me um, four and two. Okay, so I need to add some more oxygens and some more hydrogens onto the left hand side. The only way I can do that is by adding another KOH. So that changes all of my numbers. Uh, that gives me two potassiums, two oxygens and four hydrogens. So now my hydrogens and my oxygens are balanced but my potassiums aren't. So we need to add another K on there. That will make that one two there. Write it out neatly. I have two circles that have K in, plus two circles that have H2O in. Turns into, not equals, two circles of potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. Circles around everything. 
even if you start to feel a bit confident with these, just keep drawing your circles for me because we don't want to be losing marks by making silly mistakes in the exam when you're stressed, when you're under pressure, when you're not thinking right. So one, four, one, uh, one, two, one. So I need to add some more chlorines on. The only way I can do that is by adding another circle of MgCl2. Squish that in there. Change that. That becomes a four. That becomes a two. So I need to add another magnesium on. So that now becomes a two. And we're balanced. Here we go. Now I know these are starting to look a bit complicated. That's okay. Because if you want to get the top grades, we're going to need to do complicated looking things. But if we just follow the rules through clearly, there shouldn't be any problem with you doing these. Now with something this complicated, what I suggest you do is to leave the um, oxygens to last because they're always going to be your tricky things. Right, one magnesium, one carbon, we have six oxygens, one hydrogen, one nitrogen, one magnesium, uh, one carbon, um, six, seven, eight, nine oxygens, two and two. I told you these oxygens were going to be tricky, didn't I? Um, right, so let's start with the nitrogens because that looks nice and easy. We are going to need to add another nitric acid on there. So let's have a look at those numbers. Um, we now have 9, 2 and 2. Oh, and that's it. We're done. So, I mean, look at that. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't that scary. It was actually a lovely, easy one to do, even though it looked scary at the start. If you are confused about brackets, I have a separate video for you on that. But just briefly, this little 2 here is times by everything inside. So there are 2 nitrogens and 6 oxygens there. Um, like I said before, the best thing you can do is just do loads and loads and loads and loads of balancing equations. Um, because it's going to come up, it comes up every single year. It's going to be worth good marks if you can get it. The best place for you to do that practice is going to be over on my classroom channel or go and get my book, Maths, Chemistry, Bits of Science Students from my website.